What? One done. Listen, boys. Are we looking at her? I hope you'll find someone else. I hope you'll find someone else. I've done the move. So love you, so love you like, like I do. Like I do. Ah, hello, another episode of Carnival Scene. And you may be looking for somebody else to love, but I'm sure you can't find somebody else or somewhere else to be than right here on Scene TV watching this show, Carnival Scene. And my name is Gerard Morisili, or you could call me LDV if you want to. And I'm alongside the man himself who is back from a very long trip, a very exciting trip, the maestro. KJ, yes. Kino Johnson. I'm back, I'm back, y'all. Right. Just came back from Florida, man. It was so awesome, dude. With a new asset? Uh, no, no, that's a, that's a Jamaican in me, man. Every <laughs> time we go to play, wherever we touch down, yeah. that's the accent we pick up, <laughs> as many Jamaicans do. But it was real vibes. It was very good. It was proud moments uh, for the Gen X family. Band of the year. Mm. Big 4 0. You don't need a song. You know, you know, music is my thing. Music is the other thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, Bro, it was um, it was awesome. It was a good experience overall. A lot of logistical scares. Oh gosh. A hurricane Milton, however, hearts goes out yeah. to Central Florida, especially Definitely. my old stopping ground, Tampa. Whoa. Mm. I got teary eyed looking at the reviews and the and the news and the highlights. Um supposed to be doing some work with family and friends up there in mid November. Yeah. They need some help, support. Um, but Carnival went on in South Florida, Miami, Absolutely. Miami Dade and Broward were Absolutely. somewhat unscathed and it was a, it was a very I, good Carnival. I can see though know, that from the, the, the pictures, videos, you know, anything that you could see on social media you come across, yes. it was a complete vibe, you know? It was a complete vibe and we're going to hear from the organizers in a bit, but they implemented different mechanisms and, and protocols which ensured that Carnival was an experience of fun, organic, but still there was a lot of structure. Yeah. Sometimes bands were scheduled to cross the stage, let's say 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. And at 9.41, we say, okay, now it's your time. And like, masqueraders are tired, feathers are not feathering anymore. Yeah, so yeah. They, they, they are so proud of themselves and the masqueraders felt it too. Um, so that's, that's a huge applause, round of applause for the like Miami team. 40 years and all. Did it feel like a 40 year? What are you trying to say? Why, why, how I must know no, that? No, I mean, right? I mean, no, I know. <laughs> you have to be specific. No, I know. I know. In the 40th okay, year. 40th year. In the 40th year. Yeah, yeah, not, for, 40 yeah. years of Miami Carnival. Yes. I think, you know, you would know what it's like to be 40. Okay. Not but yet. Okay. Did, it, did it feel like a big celebration? It felt like a hallmark year. It felt like something special. And on the heels of um, the scare of, of Hurricane Milton, it was a huge sigh of relief for many of the masqueraders, especially the outer towners who braved the, the reports and stayed tuned to the Miami Carnival reports at all, each individual band. Mm -hmm. And when they got on the ground, it was like, let's do this. There was still rain mm -hmm. and there were several, several fets. If in your Jamaica, I rain for so much, promote a ball, only for beer, share up because <laughs> they're not going to be purchased. However, um, those who came to town, I was in a fete. Mm -hmm. Big up to Viva La Carnival because you guys threw a fete. There was about 39 minutes of hard pouring rain. Mm -hmm. But that's good. That's what and when fitness. I went inside after the rain, because no. your boy was in the AC chilling, <laughs> doing some work. But when I fitness, go inside no, after the rain, LDV, you can't miss the rain. Inside the ram. Yeah. Talk. Jam Park, whatever you want to say, whichever accent, it was so well supported. I'm talking over 1,600 people inside a, a Sunday fit, mm -hmm. a Saturday fit, pardon, Sunday morning early, yeah. Rain or shine, they know the party. You got a fit. But the thing is, you know, you know, you know rain and fitting is just go hand in hand. You know that. Yeah, but there's this new thing about cutesy and demure and... Yeah. So no. there's a there's a hybrid of revelers going to watch Janelle Van Camtree smiling. It, 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 it is, though, you see, here. You see, no, there's set a, a carnival. It's a, there's a, when there's a middle Miami game. carnival, yes. Trinidad, yes. different carnivals. I've seen the people there just want to party and have Bro, a great the time. The diaspora represented so strong Absolutely. and so well. Absolutely, the entire east coast of USA was there. Mm -hmm. Ontario and Montreal had a huge representation. I'm gonna try the accent in it. 
<laughs> but UK Massive still took the seven hour flight. And so, yeah, it was a very well supported Miami Carnival and masqueraders enjoyed themselves mm -hmm. in the midst of rain, in, in the midst of scares and storm. They, they came out, showed up and showed out. It was good. All right, well, tell you what, Kino just gave you the perspective from someone who was actually there, but he spoke to, well, somebody else who was there, but more on the logistical side. So talking logistics, planning, execution, talking about celebrating the 40th year. He spoke with one of the directors, of course, and they would give us an idea, telling us who was the man of the year. Well, you know, we did uh, review that a little earlier, but we talked about how things all came together for Miami Carnival. Let's take a look at that interview right now. Look, we, we always expect masqueraders to be, you know, upset. I mean, you, 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 they spend their money and they trust us as a brand to, you know, deliver. So, of course, we said, we think that, you know, but we were, the biggest thing a masquerade ever told me when we first started is, you know, always communicate because whether it's our fault or not, we, 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 we have to communicate with the masqueraders. So, you know, that's what we did. We communicated and we, we made provisions and we made sure that it was good. So, you know, we, we, like I said, thanks, thanks to the partners that we have that were able to pivot, that were able to get stuff uh, prepared. You know, I mean, it's crazy. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect the, the judges to know that all oh, there was like a piece missing from one of the sections, like like a leg piece. Yeah. I didn't, I, I, I was, I wasn't preening that. I was just more, I was more um, concerned about the masqueraders it's accepting crazy. that, you know, and just saying that. Oh, look, but luckily it was a small leg piece, like a thigh, like a, a calf piece. I was missing from um, our biggest section, Razor. Um, the others, the, our second largest section, Tala, was missing bras. There was no bras. And we had to have what? the bras remade in two days. So they, I don't think they know about that. But, you know, so that kudos to our amazing sense. partners. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt, Matthew, Matthew our, my, my, my um, the other director that's in charge of like costume production and those things. And, you know, he has, he's the one with the partnerships. What made that happen? You know, kudos to him. He pivoted quickly. Didn't I never seen Matthew move so fast? <laughs> so, you know, and he got things done. And meanwhile, I was there stressing the entire time, just praying that things would just work out, and it did. Been working for a while. I barely see my child. Hey, been working for so long. Been working for a while. I barely see my child. Hey, been working for so long. We are going to announce the top four back four positions. In fourth place, we have in third place, big and strong one island. This year I'm moving like a carnival jam. I get it on body, put my hands up. I think it all wrong, so I must must play. It's me and my friend that I'm the outside hold. Like a carnival jumbo I get it on body, put my hands up I drink it all on, so I must must play It's me and my friend that I'm the young man Give me room, let me jump on, let me mind Okay, in second place Ramaji Mass International Hey, hey, hey Viking Hey, hey, hey Yo Million carnival of a contract. Every year we go hard like nail lie on the road with truck bigger than humpback wheels. So they can come back with calendar and just mark that date. How when you see them to this come on, this thing is my time to jump on, my time to run, boy. So, band of the year 2024, Gen X Carnival. Congratulations. Gen X Carnival. This year I'm moving like a carnival jumbo. I get it on my put my hands up. I drink it all up, so I must must play. It's me and my friend that I'm the outside hold. Oh yeah, yeah. Like a carnival jumbo. I get it on my put my hands up. 
Yeah, so you heard it. Congratulations to Gen X. Band of the year for Miami Carnival. Another one, you know, another one. Bro. How y'all just keep doing it? Just another one, just dominating Hard. the road, dominating the, the feathers, Hard. dominating the car. You want to interview Miami Kino or Jamaica Kino? Because if you interview Jamaica <laughs> Kino, you go, yeah, hard, hard work. <laughs> hard work. Hard work. Team. <laughs> if you interview Kino from Miami, you're going to hear it's real, real tough stuff, bro. <laughs> because I'm not going to give away too much of um, the Gen X's Secrets. Operations, BTS, yeah, no however. Secrets. Even though you, you, you did show us all this. I did show. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say this right now. Yeah. There was one point in time where three boxes were Milton in. <laughs> Milton, we were supposed to get a delivery Sunday. Yes. And Milton said, no, <laughs> let's make that Thursday <laughs> for your Friday redemption. The whole place went up and down. Mm. People lose weight, gas I take up people, mm. nerves everywhere. So shout out to the core Miami directors of AJD, Matthew and Taji, because they were quarterbacking, navigating, changing up. They are best friends with FedEx right now. Yeah. They know everybody from Miami to Tennessee to Panama City. They are there. So it's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And with a natural disaster, like Hurricane Milton, um, things do change. Yeah. However, our redemption time was still quick, still very speedy, and the masqueraders were A plus, A grade, happy. So, give thanks for all of that. God give you all full Feels marks. Feels even so. much more. God great. give you full marks because dealing with with Hurricane Milton definitely had to be a task. And I know, I mean, we heard bits of it. We heard yeah. about how you had to never navigate through that, mm -hmm. um, not knowing if you'll be able to still have. Carnival to that extent to because that you don't extent. know what was going to happen. And then at the last minute, God said, you know, have fun. Without quoting or paraphrasing anyone, <laughs> we're going to go to an interview right now with one of Gen X directors where I asked how exactly were you truly feeling when you heard that some of your packages may not arrive in time because of the hurricane. Have a listen. Well, Kino, I tell you, you know, Every carnival, there's always something. And, you know, when we thought that we did everything and we dotted all our I's and crossed our T's, here comes Milton. So not only did Milton, you know, unravel the boxes, so to speak, it also caused fear for some of the traveling masqueraders. So we had a couple cancellations, you know, people who felt that, you know, the, I mean, even though the hurricane wasn't coming to Miami, because it was hitting Florida, I mean, some of them didn't understand that it wouldn't really impact Miami, even though all the forecasts said it wouldn't, and it didn't. Um, however, so we, we we closed on the Wednesday just as a precaution, because actually in the area there was some wind and a little bit of rain and stuff, but as a precaution, the yeah. county closed the school, so we felt that we should close the mass camps, and some of the other bands also closed their mass camps on Wednesday. Um, but for the boxes, man, that, that was an issue that, you know, we didn't find that out until Tuesday, because all our boxes were scheduled to come in, and we know FedEx let us know that there's going to be a delay due to the hurricane. And lo and behold, about six boxes were just missing, and they're still missing to this day. So um, one section in particular wasn't able to get, um, you know, certain pieces. So, you know, we communicated that to, you know, the masqueraders before and after they came in. But, um, and then everything else we had to have remade. So we actually have partners in Trinidad that were able to fly in and brought pieces from Trinidad and actually made it in two days. Yeah. So we had, there's two sections, like one section in particular had um, almost 200 masqueraders that were impacted and had to have things remade. But thankfully we have great partners that were able to help us out and, you know, we, we did it. So yeah, that's, that's the story of Carnival. That's the story <laughs> of Carnival, man. All that can go left goes right. Exactly. This now. It was all worth it. Tell us about the vibe, the ambiance when it all came to actuality, especially crossing the stage. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, man. So this is probably our fourth carnival in Miami. Let me see. We had um we had um yeah. what's our first carnival? The first one was called um Beauty and Chaos, then we had the COVID year, which is uh, we didn't have a carnival, but Immortals, then we had Origins, 
Then we had um, Mother Pontetic last year, and then now this year. So this is our fifth Miami Carnival. Yeah. And there was something about this carnival that felt different. I didn't know what it was, but the the energy just 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 going. So one of the things that we did first, right, which um we did this year was we had our brunch slash lunch experience before the road park. So typically what we would do is we'd have a food truck, like a 50 foot truck that had food on there. The issue is that food truck is always at the back of the procession, right? So this year we said, and we always have spoilage. We always throw away a lot of food because people just don't go to the back. Yeah. You might be hungry, but because you're pumping and you're jamming and you're drinking, food is the last thing on your mind. You're not going to walk back to the back of the procession to, to, to eat, guilty, right? Guilty, guilty as charged, so, yeah. Yeah, man, myself included. Like I've never eaten until this year. So. Okay. Um, I so we said, hey, look, let's do a brunch experience at the beginning, and we you know we planned that out. So we have the area that we always park up where Genex park up because in Miami Carnival, if you've ever been, as you know, when you enter the the park, it's a massive park. Mm-hmm. We enter the park. Um, there's 18 bands staged, right? Yeah. So we always stick pick the same spot regardless of what number we are, right? So what well, couple of years we're number 14 number 12, or this year we're number 10, but we're in the same spot. So people know that's where Gen X is, right? I think some of the bands like their spot that they're, they've been in for the past couple of years. Yeah. So what we did, we just parked our trucks in a square and carting off that area. We put like some barricades and you had to have a Gen X uh, wristband to enter, right? So once you have a Gen X wristband, you have all your costume, you come into that area and then you're fed. You're fed breakfast, if you get there early, so we started at 10. So if you get there at 10, you get breakfast. And then around noon, we start serving lunch, oh, right? Yeah. So you come in, you're well fed. And then we, we don't start serving the hard alcohol until around, we didn't start serving that until around 12, 30 or, or so. Mm-hmm. But we had like rum punch, we had some sponsored cocktails from Duke and Dame and other brands, local brands in Miami that were giving cocktails until we opened up the, the, the general bar. But that was the first time we did this, and we thought that was a hit. A lot of people said it was, um, you know, they, they loved it because the food situation on the road for Miami Carnival is always, you know, weird. Because, you know, every other carnival you go to, you get the food, there's a lunch stop, right? Yeah. Miami, there's no lunch stop. Miami, the lunch is actually before you walk off. Or that's what we did, did it this year. Yeah. So I think that was a hit. Um, we didn't have any spoilage this year. All the food was, was, was given out. Everybody ate. On the road, we still had a smaller food truck that was given out what we call light fare. So there was like snaps, there was like fries, chicken nuggets, yeah. chicken tenders, wraps, things like that, right? So I thought it was a, a good thing. But to answer your question, this year, I mean, crossing the stage for me is always a watershed moment, like, so to speak, like, you know. Let's, let's, let's clarify what watershed moment means. Because... Man, like, move to tears, man. Just yes. see people crossing the stage, yes. move to tears. Because you work so hard for the whole year, and then every year I want to give up. Every year I call my bridge and I say, yo, you want you don't want you don't want to take this band from me, bro, boss. Take this band, no, please, because it's so difficult. Like especially with the hurricane Milton thing, knowing that we had all these boxes lost and mm-hmm. we had to pivot. That was so stressful. And I thought I thought we'd never make it out. And when you get across the stage, when you realize it's like a weight lifted off your shoulder, but also to see the joy on people's faces, to know that they're they, they understood the assignment and they came out to their costumes and they, you know, and then we did it. And to, to have won, we never ever expected in our wildest dream that we'd have won Miami Carnival. Like, we never expect to win because the other bands really, you know, a lot of bands that are in Miami Carnival are storied brands, you know, like, you know, Ramage, you know, they've won it like six times or seven times, you know, and, you know, they, they know what they're doing. So for us, the, the fact that they recognize that, you know, we really put our best foot forward this year. We really tried to make things right and really tried to make things perfect mm-hmm. for the masquerader. I mean, I, I can't be more thankful than I am right now. So big up to Miami Carnival, big up to the judges, big up to the board for, um, you know, making us number one. And, you know, it, it's a rigorous scoring process, you know, but, you know, oh, I guess we scored the most points. Big up to the DJs. Kevin Crown actually won international DJ as well. Um, he was a DJ when we were crossing the stage. Yeah. He's our international DJ. Patrick the Hype Man was our MC. And, you know, I was up there to kind of like, you know, walking Patrick through the synopsis, the storylines. Yeah. And, you know, he did a, an amazing job, man. And this is the first year we, we normally have like a meeting with Patrick. I say, okay, this is what you're going to say this at this time. And it's like a long drawn out meeting for like two hours, you know? 
this year we didn't do any meetings. I sent them the synopsis the day before, like Saturday after Juve. I said, yo, here's what we're doing when we cross the stage. And then I spoke to him for five minutes before we started. And he knocked it out of the park, man. So things worked out. Number one band, Miami Carnival, on a hallmark 40th year. Congratulations for that. So thank you, man. But it's a quick Euro step or a quick Caribbean step to Jamaica soon. Tell us a little bit, a little insight, a little sneak, a little teaser about what we can expect for April 2025 in Jamaica. Well, what I can say is that everybody needs to go to our socials, go to GenXS Jamaica on Instagram. That's our number one channel that we're going to like disseminate information through. But um, you can also check it out at GenX Carnival as well. But pre-register, guys. That's all I'm telling you. Pre-register because the offer that we have for pre-registration is that you get a complimentary Juve package. So if you've ever been to an Immortals Juve, you know it's probably like one of the best Juves, right? We try to make it a yeah. real authentic Juve. You're going to have live performances. You have breakfast when we, when we, when we finish the road march. You have a pre-pump before we hit the road. We have, you know, top shelf premium beverages. And, you know, we try to make this thing like, you know, a really amazing time. It's like the gateway drug to Carnival, Juve. You need to try it. So we're giving away three Mortal Juve packages. If you want to wear a monokini, you can upgrade to a monokini once we release the packages. Mm -hmm. But that's the best offer in town right now. And plus, as a thank you, as a thank you, if you pre register, you get an additional $25 credit from us. Right? Okay. So you'll have $225. As a credit, one is launch, right? So once you launch costumes um, next month, you'll be able to use that pre reg credit towards buying a costume or a t shirt package so you can hit the road on Jamaica, in Jamaica. Um, I can't give away too much. I don't want to talk about the theme or not like that. But uh, it's a so theme that we worked one on. Keyword. One word. No, man. What, no, what's man. What's online? What do we see here online right now? Sun. The sun. Time. The sun, the sun, the sun is always there. The sun is always shining. And I want you guys to rule the road. This Carnival in Jamaica 2025. That's all I'm going to say. All right. just, you know, keep your eyes peeled and your ears, you know, glued. <laughs> or, or whatever it is. I know where, oh, yeah, we so, to our social, to our website. And pre-register. Everybody needs to pre-register. If you're planning to jump Carnival with Gen XS, it makes sense to pre-register. It doesn't make sense for you to wait. A lot, wait, of, a lot of new masqueraders or first timers may not also know that includes first dibs. Yeah, yeah man. You also get yeah, so for instance, for instance, yeah. like last year we had a costume sellout in like a week. Yeah. Right. So if you pre-register at a costume sellout, you can send us an email because you're a pre-registrant, you get you get special treatment, right? So we'll do our best. We probably will get you into that section if such a sold out. Yeah. I mean, obviously with you know ample time, but you can't come back to me four months from now and say, oh, hey, I pre-registered, I need, you know, yeah. I need this section. No, it's not going to work because, you know, things go into production. But once you're pre-registered, you get a little bit more special treatment when it comes down to things like that. So pre-register, if it's not even for that, for the free Juve experience, because if you don't pre-register, you're going to have to pay additional for your Juve, which we, we charge additional for Juve. Yeah. Only because not everybody plays Juve. But this is a, this is a way for you to, you know, get, get, get your costume and you get a free Juve package. It's a steal of a deal for me, so. Steal of a deal. GenX Carnival at GenX Jamaica. Taji GenX Carnival Miami team. 40th year, you were one of the year. Congratulations and see you all on the road in Jamaica soon. Yes, man. All right. Thanks Thanks for having us. Quick break. When we return, we hear from a GenX ambassador who also represents Air Committee, and she's just a super angel on the road. Stick and stay. More Carnival scene after this. Thanks. Genesis go be the best man, the only man, the last man standing. Be working for a while, I barely see my child. Hey. Been working for so long. I barely know these songs. Well, you see, today they wanna clock out.
Hey, hi, howdy, Carnival Seniors. We're here in the 305 and 954 for the Hallmark 40th year of Miami Carnival. What's the vibe like? I got you, but more importantly, Scene TV got you. Here are some of the vibes. I hope you'll find someone else. I hope you'll find someone else. I hope you'll find someone else. To love you like I do. To love you. That's your quick behind the scenes of Miami Carnival 2024 with Steam TV. See you next year. Tanya Williams was on the road with Carnival Scene Gerard. She did, she did her thing. So big up Ton Travels, as she's um, renownedly known, super vlogger. She's a new carnivalist doing her thing. Mm -hmm. But who is an angel? Who is a carnivalist? Who is my pretty friend? <laughs> from Trinidad. Let's welcome to Carnival Scene right now, Marissa Williams, who was there with Gen X on the road, in the fits, everywhere for Carnival, Miami Carnival, the 40th year. Marissa, welcome to Carnival Scene. How are you doing, love? I'm great, how are you guys? Not too bad, I'm not too bad, thank you. For Marissa, this is the first time in six shows that this man has been lost for words. Please tell me why. <laughs> All of a sudden, a pretty lady pops up on the, on the screen oh, and this, right. I'm fine. Voice get deep oh. like John Wayne. Anyway, Marissa, <laughs> they which section, is, <laughs> no, the world soon know. <laughs> which section did you jump with for Gen X Ravenous 2024? Razor. Razor. I was one of David's fabulous costumes. How was the experience? on the road inside the fairground because it's not the typical road a la Trinidad or Jamaica, but what's that experience like for you fetting through the fairgrounds with your friends, family, and fellow Gen Xers? It's different. It's shorter. I think Trinidad is a lot more peace. Um, but I try not to compare them. I'd be a little biased. I'll always say Trinidad is the best. <laughs> That's facts. Jamaica and Miami had different vibes, but it was still a pretty good experience. Mm -hmm. It's like a happy hunt, though, when around a fairground. Right. Yeah, I, I, and not just the road, but the entire carnival experience. How was it for you? This was different. It was a lot of pace. Gen X of comfort. <laughs> a lot of Tennessee. So there was a lot of petting, a lot of drinking, but a lot of fun. Really nice guys. I love the experience. It was nice being out of Trinidad, a uh, different environment. And they'll probably take my Trini card the same, but I like the Nixa dance hall. Mm. Not just straight soca everywhere. We're going wow. to take that sound bite wow. and put it on every Jamaica platform, every yes. carnival platform, because that's a that's a hot that's a hot yes. debate. A no. hot hot debate. It is a it, it it's it's a reality now. Does it, dance all belong be. in in carnival? Soca is the culture, and it, I get that. Soca is the culture, and I I get wanting to push it and keep it true to what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I like dancing. There there are some people though that would say. Okay, fair enough. But there's some people that would argue, and I'm not some people, let me just put that out there, that would argue that there's no, there's no place for soca in dancehall. So why are, why, you know, why is it that, no. that but yeah, that's a big There's one that's Caribbean big. people. Today, I learned how to properly pronounce the word that Gerard is going to pronounce for me because this Dominica St. Lucia vibe, which is Bouillon. Bouillon. Mm -hmm. Right now, not nobody like someone else. Like <laughs> big up to Chil to to, no, to little boy Quan. Yeah, little boy Quan Ch trilogy. A big tune as a big six foot six man with beard. We're not playing the fet. I just feel nice. <laughs> like I'm not supposed to feel so happy, but it's a it's a it's, no. it's music. So the infusion of different genres across the region, it it says nothing. Uh, Boyan, Boyan has been taking the world by storm. By I, storm. I, and if we we're on the topic of music, what was the music experience like for you? The mix is the mix that I love. I love going from soca to a little dancehall. Every now and then somebody might play a little hip hop song. I love the mix. You don't get stuck in one genre and I get it. I get why we do it the way we do it. I appreciate the difference in other countries. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that they mix the genres. So when I'm in Trinidad, I know I'm going to hear strictly soca. But when I go to Jamaica, I go to Miami, I love that they took what we had and made it their own and tweaked it. So it was good. My it was a lot of fun. I would do it again. You know that <laughs> in Trinidad, I've been to Trinidad outside the carnival season. Mm -hmm. I don't hear one soca tune. No, I, likewise. 
Chunibad, Zessa Music, and Dancehall. Dance non stop. So I'm like, yeah. where, am, where am I? Literally in the just for like, tone, for like the Spanish tone or Mobe, like, yeah. they're playing some tunes I haven't heard in years. So shout out to all Trini DJs because That's they true. truly love and know music. And there's, there's, they're competing with, uh, with the likes of um, MC LDV. But, but and, you know, right? Sometimes, yeah. sometimes I feel even in Barbados, that's not Barbie, Barbados. Well, Barbados music is kind of creeping towards that. Towards so, what? Say it. Towards. I say it. Right. Say it. Yeah, because I mean. You think you can't even say it? No, I, I just say there part. There's a time where right, once Mia. there's a party, <laughs> Hi, you were here soca, right? But no. Yeah. Once it's out of crop over season, yep. No, everything much. But there should so. be a mix all year round. All it can't right? be strictly soca for carnival and as carnival don't be here nothing. Mm -hmm. But no. yeah, these things happen. Speaking of mix, speaking of balance, speaking of oneness, have a look at this video, which speaks to the heights of it. It's October. It's cancer awareness, and us two men are true believers in cancer awareness. And this pretty lady in the middle. She herself is in this video. Have a look. One in eight women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. In 2024, an estimated 310,720 women and 2,800 men will be diagnosed with invasive breast cancer. Chances are you know at least one person who has been affected by this disease. But there is hope. The five-year relative survival rate is 99% when caught early. Pink Hibiscus Breast Health Specialist is the Caribbean's first comprehensive breast health center offering complete care for breast concerns. That's why Pink Nick TT is partnering with Pink Hibiscus for the 2025 Carnival edition of Pink Nick Soir de Party. Join us on Carnival Saturday 2025 to celebrate and raise awareness for breast cancer. So gather your friends as we take you where every corner whispers secrets of romance, fashion, the art and history and soaking in the city of life. Laissez-vous emmener en soirée à Paris. Let's take you to an evening in Paris with Pink Nick Titi. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. It's not for show. Sure. We believe in it. So I want to get it correct. Pink Hibiscus Breast Health Specialist. Shout out to Air Committee. There are friends, there are family in Trinidad. Marissa is also an Air Committee ambassador while she represents Genex and Genexis. She's a true carnival angel. And Marissa was in this video because she also believes in the initiative. Breast cancer awareness. We are all one or two degrees of separation from someone who has been closely, dearly impacted or going through um, fighting breast cancer. So the awareness is fever pitch to carnival scene, mm -hmm. as well as Marissa, our guest. Marissa, how does it feel like Pink Nick? Pink Nick TT. It's a fete where, yes, it's glamorous, it's lavish, all dressed in pink. However, when you fete with a purpose like cancer awareness, tell our, our, our viewers how does that feel that, you know, you're going to a fete so beautiful, so lavish, but behind it all, proceeds, profits go towards such a, a great initiative. Uh, Fetting is part of our culture. We will party the rains if we win a game, lose a game, someone dies, someone's born, anything. You will fetch anything. You drop your, your phone, let's fight for that. So mm -hmm. it's nice that, especially for Air Committee Picnic, I love that they took the time to put the efforts into something more important than just drinking. Like, there's more to life than just a party. So if we go on a party, at least have a purpose for it. Yes. And supporting a cause like this is really important. There are a lot of other causes that we need to focus on as well, but mm -hmm. one at a time. And the committee is committed to getting there. Yeah. I, I know you're not a, a medical practitioner or a professional. No, we're not. <laughs> Don't ask me any medical. <laughs> no, I just, I just wanted to ask you, though, how do you keep yourself in check to ensure that, especially through this month, that you and your friends encouraging them to ensure that they get themselves checked. Well, we're not going to ask my age, but after a certain age, we, we, won't, we won't do that. Checked out by the doctor, so I actually have a quick coming up myself. Um, it's nice. something that men tend to ignore until it's too late. The people in general tend to ignore until it's a major problem and it's too late to do something about it. So, regular checkup, you have to test yourself. Google that one. I'm not going to go into how to do it, but there are ways for you to do those self exams at home. And if you think there's a problem, seek medical help. You know, sure. you know, I, I actually take breast cancer awareness month very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I lost a cousin back in 2016, in October, actually, mm -hmm. coincidentally. 
Um, so yeah, this this is something that I support wholeheartedly because I've been there. I do relate, and I'm a private guy. Anybody knows me, I'm super private. Big up to Auntie, two aunts, I won't call their names, but two aunts are breast cancer survivors. I'm gonna go and hold it, because if I talk about it more, you know what I mean? Tears basically gonna flow like a river from my eyeballs, and I'm gonna too want to get emotional. Mm. But it is dear to and close to my heart, so big up to Air Committee and Picnic TT because fitting with a purpose, I think it's called Soiree de Pali. It's all the way in March, mm -hmm. but they had to highlight it from October. Absolutely. It's the month, in of, the month. Um, Cancer Awareness Month. Yeah. It's all about pink. It's all about breast cancer awareness. So shout out to them for sure, and it's a huge initiative. Marissa, before you go... I want to say one thing, though. Yes. Picnic is a huge initiative, but I will tell you that party is one of my favorite parties. So it is. So you're actually not missing out. It's a good investment. You will have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It is. They put effort in the decor, the food, everything is really good. We are on the heels of Jamaica announcement and ban launch season. She has on a Gen XS hat. All biases aside, name three of your favorite things about Carnival in Jamaica. Three, two, one, go. One. Dance all Jamaican actors. <laughs> I like it. Dance all, yeah. Uh, That's what? One? That's one. Um, which one was one? Dance all? Oh, no, we didn't. We only heard dance all. Yeah, we only heard accent. dance. I like the accent. I like the accent. Oh, the accent. Oh, so when a Jamaican <laughs> man speaks to you and looks in your eyes and says, baby, what go on? How's your day? You're uh, just. All right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and what's number three? What's number three? Um, the vibe. It's a different vibe. Mm. I love watching everybody. Does these little synchronized dances like your practice sets? <laughs> really break into the. Big up, Ding Dong Reavers. Every time, world yeah, leader. Big up. All right, so I'm gonna, I, em, before we go, I'm gonna embarrass Marissa because the fourth thing is, gentlemen, <laughs> you will see Janelle and team tag Marissa in this interview. You may follow her, but if you do choose to slide in the DM, <laughs> just know that it is the vibe. <laughs> the vibe, the accent. The accent. Can't forget the accent. And the dance on Number dude. four. Do not think you can feed her, because number four is food. Her palate is very vast, and it is very bougie. Yes, you can buy her a pan chicken, yes. but know that sushi, mm. some 40-ounce sirloin, I'll leave it there. But that's right. all here. That's all the offerings in Jamaica. We're going to talk about Jamaica launch season. Of course, shout out to the... The Fet Republic team. Oh, God, I can't We're going to talk wait. about them soon. They yeah. have what, some party in the... What? Bush? Bush. Yeah. Republic Bush. Yeah. But they don't, they don't just have that. Yes. They, we, they have like carnival twice a year, mm -hmm. Republic Beach. They actually have a, a lounge. A lounge. That like you can become a member. Real of. things coming up on the next so, yeah. episode. Well, so thanks again to the Miami Carnival organizers for coming through, talking to us. Big 4-0 for them. Gen X got the number one spot. That says that they're the band, one band, one Gen X in Miami Carnival. So kudos, salute to the entire family there. And thank you. Where is she? She's not gone. She's gone. Director, is she out? <laughs> Marissa, Carnivalist, Air Committee Ambassador, Gen X, Gen XS Ambassador, and one of the sweetest, nicest persons you'll ever meet, not just on the road, in the fits. True but she can handle herself. My favorite friends, Super Queen. She can handle herself, though. She can handle herself. Let's leave it there. Yeah. She's a G. She's a whole alphabet. That's Maris, everybody. This has been Carnival Scene for KJ, the Bayesian, LDV. Big up yourself, people. And, yeah, of course, you can't wait to see what else we have coming up. So you got to stay tuned. All right, KJ, LDV, signing off.